Amanda McKenzie is frustrated with the older generation of decision makers like Professor Ross Garneau. To talk about these really low level targets really doesn't give future generations a chance. It doesn't give our generation a chance when we're, um, when we're older, when I'm in 2050 looking back at, um, when I'm sort of in my 60s and looking back and what am I going to be leaving my children? Together with another young woman, Anna Rose, they've formed the Australian Youth Climate Coalition and they're coming after Professor Garneau, Prime Minister Kevin Rudd and anyone else who can influence the kind of world they'll inherit. The people that are making decisions around climate change now in government and in business, they're not really going to be around when the worst impacts of climate change start to hit. But we will be around and it will become a lot harder to live the kind of life that our parents and our grandparents lived. That's all we're asking for. The same urgency was evident in Professor Garneau's various reports released this year, in which he accepted scientists' recommendations that the best option was to try to limit greenhouse gases in the atmosphere to 450 parts per million, which equates to about two degrees of warming by the end of the century. He even warned that with two degrees warming, the planet has a 50-50 chance of flipping into dangerous climate change. I'm firstly going to talk about leadership in the context of climate change. Which is why Amanda McKenzie was stunned when Professor Garneau concluded that the most practical approach for Australia was to adopt a 10% reduction target by 2020 and 60% by 2050, meaning greenhouse gas concentrations of 550 parts per million and risking temperature rises of up to 5.6 degrees. Unpalatable but necessary, he said, because the international community will fail more difficult targets. Professor Garneau states that winning global agreement around 550 parts per million would be a step forward of historic dimension. But he acknowledges in his report that this great step forward will probably mean the destruction of much of the Great Barrier Reef, as well as Kakadu, the Alpine National Parks and dramatically less water in the Murray-Darling River system. Well, for me, I felt really, really sad about that and actually brought me to tears standing there on the bus stop on my way home and just thinking about all the things that we're going to lose some of the most beautiful places in Australia, like the Great Barrier Reef and Kakadu, just die. She's echoing some of Australia's leading scientists who also publicly criticise the Garneau target and who are warning that a slew of data like rapid Arctic ice melt indicates global warming is happening faster than any of them had predicted. There are people like myself, and I believe many, many more scientists now, who are frantically, hysterically worried. Another one of these facts comes in that catches even you unawares and you think, oh shit, you know, not another one. You know, I wasn't expecting that. Now why we aren't just, you know, panicking at this point and um, starting to really, you know, make some changes, I, it just, it, it blows my mind sometimes. How are you going with AYD? Anna Rose, Amanda McKenzie and their Youth Climate Coalition aren't giving up. They're planning to protest whenever Prime Minister Kevin Rudd appears publicly to push him to adopt steeper targets. Their message for the federal government is simple. Your targets, our future. Amanda McKenzie had a chance to confront Professor Garneau with this message at a recent Sydney lunch when she told him... Your report seems to say that to do what is necessary is politically impossible, but we need to do the impossible to avoid the unimaginable. The federal government is due to announce its decision on targets before the end of the year. Margot O'Neill, Lateline.